If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church. Oh, yes, I'm good. You are. 
for us, Lord. It will be those sea of you. You are there with us, O oh God. Amen. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church.
Hi, I'm Aaron and I pastor the worship team here in SIBKL. Worship is such an integral part of our Christian life and church. Every time we worship, we are mirroring what is happening in the throne room of God in the heavenlies. We are bringing that reality of the heavenlies down to earth. So when we worship, we are changing the atmosphere around us and we are preparing the way for God to move in and around us. In SIBKL, we want to worship God in spirit and in truth, where the truth of God is known in our spirit and becomes a reality in our life. Join us and let's move forward together in this season of transformation where God wants to bring us to greater encounters with Him. Experience firsthand how God can use your talents and your gifts to build His kingdom. Register your interest to attend our Worship Info Day where we will share with you on how you can be involved. Let us come together and bring heaven down to earth here in SIBKL and I will see you at our Worship Info Day. Thinking of getting married and want to build a strong foundation to start on the right track? Fear not, the pre-marriage course has got you covered. Through a series of meaningful sessions, we'll cover down-to-earth topics such as conflict, communication, and so much more. Join us and both of you, alongside other couples, will surely be blessed. Further details are on the screen now. The Omicron variant has just awakened another phase of uncertainty among the public. Is Omicron wave really severe? Which age groups are most likely to be affected by this wave? Workplace at the River will be hosting an online forum to discuss some of the frequently spread rumours about the Omicron variant. We will be having an active COVID-19 medical practitioner Dr. John Fan alongside pediatrics consultant Dr. Chai Pei Fan to share with us more about the Omicron variant from their respective areas of expertise. Do join us and we hope to see you there. Let's continue to build and keep our prayer altars strong. Join us as we come together for our upcoming 24-hour prayer altars. Details will be shown on the screen. Feel convicted to share the good news to your colleagues or friends? Running Alpha in your workplace can be easily integrated into a regular working day, during lunch or at the end of the day. Make your workplace a mission field. Come and find out more in Alpha Conversation on Sunday, 27 February at 2 p.m. on Zoom. If you have already planned for an Alpha, come join us on the training session on Sunday, 6 of March from 2 p.m. See you then. The key for older folks is not growing old, but finishing well. For this upcoming Golden Eagle session, our very own Senior Pastor Chu will share from God's Word on how we can all finish strong and finish well. Further details will be shown on the screen, so see you there. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card.
everybody and welcome back to SIBKL. Welcome back to our weekend services. You know, for those of you that are on site, a warm welcome to you. And for those of you who are online, a warm welcome to you. Type it in the chat group, say hi to everybody. We want to get to know you. Hi everybody, I'm Aaron and I'm one of the Young Adults Pastors and I'm also the Worship Pastor here in SIBKL. And I'm enjoying myself over here. This bunch of guys are really, really awesome. And every weekend, we hope to bring you an encounter that you've never had before. An encounter with Jesus. Amen. You know, so, can I ask a show of hands, who here is new for the first time? First time visitors over here, anybody? Anybody upstairs? If you are new, you are, it's your first time here, we would like to encourage you to go out to our welcome counter to collect a gift, we have a special gift for you. And for those who, of you who are new online, click the link. We would like to get to know you. Type it in the chat group. We would like to say hi to you. And you know, right now, the number of COVID cases has been rising, right? It's been rising. So if you are a close contact, or if you, you came into contact with someone who is COVID positive, we would like to encourage you to exercise good civic practices, you know. So stay at home, self-quarantine, just to make sure that your friends and family are safe. And what we will do is we will continue to pray for you. And we will pray that none of your family, none of your friends will get COVID. And we will pray. If you have COVID, we will pray for healing for you. And we believe God will heal you. Amen? Amen? All right. You know, we've started the year with a bang. Wonderful, wonderful year, right? We started the year with the Joshua series. And this weekend is the end of our Joshua series. And you know what? This today, we have Pastor Gilbert who's going to be sharing with us from Joshua chapter 23 and 24 with the final, final, that was the end of the Joshua series, you know. It's going to be awesome, Pastor Gilbert. I believe that. I believe that. And next weekend onwards, we're going to start off with Deuteronomy. I'm excited. Are you? And I'm excited to get the service going. All right. So before we start, can I ask everybody, would you stand up with me and let us pray together? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can come back to church. We thank you that you are here in the church and you are with us at home, in our living rooms, in our bedrooms, wherever we are. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will pour your spirit out, Lord, wherever you are, that you saturate the place, Lord. Lord, that let us have an encounter with you, Lord, like never before, Lord. So Lord, we ask, Lord, come and have your way. Come and have your way in this service. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, worship team. Amen. amen. Well, good evening, church. It's good to be back at church. You know what? You know when we praise, when we worship God, it's always good to know the people next to you. Not that you're going to shake any hands or anything for obvious reasons, but look at someone next to you, behind you. Give them the biggest smile you can through your mask. Give them a wave. Yeah, do it. We're in church. It's okay to say hello to someone. You up in the balcony as well? Yeah, say hi. <laughs> There's one person saying hi. You online as well? Say hi online um, to the people worshiping. And I just want to encourage everyone to praise along with us because Jesus is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. Let's try that again. Jesus is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise this afternoon, this evening. Let's go. Everyone put your hands together with me. Hey! We know this song super easy. I come to you with a grateful heart for the things you've done. I come to you giving all my praise for the same. Everywhere I go, I will lift your name up in all I do. 
Let's sing this one more time and focus on Him. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Oh, we have eyes for only you. Jesus, our glory and our pride. Oh, you're our portion and our pride. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Yes, Lord, we adore you and behold you, Lord. We want to behold your beauty, your magnificence, your glory, Lord. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would show us by the glimpse of your glory, Lord. That you come and you give us an encounter like never before. So Lord, we fix our eyes solely on You, nothing else. Not to the left, not to the right, not to the troubles, not to the trials, not to the, to the rising cases, no. We fix our eyes on You. You are our portion. You are our prize, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, church, in this attitude of worship, We're going to pray for healing right now. Now I got this word just now, chest pain. If you are having chest pain right now in this place, or even at home, I want to invite you to place your hands on your chest right now. I have also a pain on my right calf, the right calf. If you are having that pain right now, place your hands there right now. If there is a pain in any part of your body, I want to invite you right now to put your hand wherever that is. If you are having a cough, put it on your throat. If it's chest pains, put it in your chest. If you're having shoulder pains, put it in your shoulder. If it's your knees, your legs, put your hands there. Lay hands. Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord, for your healing power to come and to fall upon your sons and daughters in this place. As we fix our eyes on you, Lord, as we fix our gaze on you, Lord, as we fix all that we are to you, Lord, we ask, Lord, for a healing touch right now. In Jesus' name, pain, be gone in Jesus' name. Discomfort, be gone in Jesus' name. We ask, Lord, for the shalom peace of God right now to come and to fall upon your sons and daughters right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. No, right now, I want you to check that part out that's feeling pain right now. Check it out, check it out. Because I believe God is healing. His healing power is in this place. If you are online and if there is a measure of healing, type it into the chat that God has healed me. There is an ease, there is a comfort that came. There is a sensation, a fiery sensation that came upon me. Share it with others, encourage people right now. You know, right now, we want to pray for those on the screen as well. So we want to pray for, let's, let's stretch our hands up. We want to pray for Aisun that has ADD. We ask Lord, we ask Lord that the peace of God will fall upon we we'll fall upon Him, Lord. We ask, Lord, for ADD to be gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, that the, the mind of Christ will come and be upon I soon right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We speak healing and restoration right now. We also pray for PC cell with serious cough and lung infection. We say cough and lung infection. You have no right. You have no place. Be gone in Jesus' name. Be gone, be gone in Jesus' name and let the healing power, the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ 
fall upon your children right now. We ask, Lord, we ask, Lord, for this, for their bodies, for their mind and their bodies, Lord, to fall under the submission of the authority of Christ right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Let's continue to sing the cross in this attitude of worship. To you we lift our eyes Jesus, our glory and our prize We adore you, behold you Our Savior ever true Oh Jesus, we turn our eyes to you Oh Jesus, we turn our eyes Yes, Lord, let us turn our eyes upon Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, for sending the Lord Jesus Christ into our life. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. We want to give you adoration, our worship, our praise, because the Lord, you came, a God, to love us. You came, a God, to show us the way. And you came, a God, to make a difference in our life that we stand today, God. And we say, you, Lord, are worthy for us to turn our eyes upon you, God. And even as we continue in this, O oh Lord, manner of worship, I pray that in Jesus' name, come, Lord, fill us, a God. And let the formation of your love be upon everyone as we sit at your feet to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, all the wonderful worship team that has led us in this evening worship. Good evening to everyone and uh, welcome to this service. You know, and also those on online, we want to welcome you. And tomorrow also, this service will be, uh, you know, shown at the 8.30 a.m. service. I will say greetings to you and good morning. Now, just before I bring to you this powerful message, because this is the last two chapters that we're going to look into in the book of Joshua, I have two very important announcements to make. Number one is I want to introduce to you our new lay pastor, Pastor Adele Chia, yeah, Pastor Adele Chia. I don't know whether you know her, but I, I know that she has a wonderful spirit, you know. She is a people person. She loves the Lord very much. She loves people. And, you know, therefore, what happened is she's going to be the pastor of this young adult ministry. That's no, is that a picture of uh, uh, Pastor Adele? Yeah. So Pastor Adele is widowed. She has two lovely children. And, uh, you know, do give her your full support. Secondly, we want to, uh, you know, to talk about the mission ministry that had, they had done such a marvelous work, uh, you know, in, especially in this area of uh, e-tuition, that is online tuition giving to the poor. And they, you know, the, 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 the children that came back with wonderful testimony of uh, good results, and they are now uh, better in their academic progress. So these students that we today that we're going to make a call is uh, from Jubilee Hostel in Pulau Bangi. Yeah, they are in need of 119 units of pre-loved laptops urgently so that they can run their classes is effect, uh, efficiently. So if you can, if you want to give, you can drop off your laptops at uh, our guard house at SMCC Level 1 uh, car park. And, uh, you know, just before you drop out, give a call to uh, Sister Billy and uh, Sister Eunice. You know, you can look into the website for more details. Uh, the numbers are there so that uh, you can, uh, you know, bring your items there and we will be able to give you more info. So thank you for your kind support. Now let us get into the message today. You know, as I say, that we are going to look into the final chapters of the book of Joshua and I trust all of us here, you know, and also me, I've been blessed and benefited from the Joshua series so far. And I hope that you too have been uh, benefited from that. You know, chapter 23 and chapter 24 
is a final speech by Joshua. And when you heard about a final speech, it's the last words of a man. And therefore, it must be very, very important, isn't it? Eh? So if you were Joshua, and you have to give this one last message, what would you say? Yeah, what would you say to the people of Israel? Now, if it was for me, I would probably remind the people of Israel, hey, continue to remain faithful in God, continue to hang on to God, cling on to God, obey His words, and avoid sins and temptation that will turn your hearts away from God. Probably, yeah, this is what I would tell the people of Israel. Come on, let's wake up, let us move on. You know, for Joshua, he wanted to exhort his leaders and his, uh, you know, people of Israel to stay strong in their faith for God. Now, every good leader, you know, before we end, you know, we want these successes not to end with us. We want, we are hoping that the, the you know, the new leadership, the new leadership will take it from there and take it to, you know, all the successes into a greater height that we always say, you know, my ceiling, Joshua's ceiling is my platform to move on to another ceiling. Yeah, that's so important, right? So Joshua has this question that is probing in his heart that says, will Israel remain faithful? Will Israel secure the land that the Lord has given them called the promised land? So Joshua, as we heard, you know, it's very old, and we're going to read that. And so it's incumbent of him to prepare God's people and challenge them with this crucial reminder. So the sermon title I have today is Joshua's Crucial Reminder. Now let's look into uh, Joshua chapter 23, verse 1 and 2. Uh, if you can look up at the screen, the verses are there. And let us read together Joshua chapter 23, verse 1 to 2. And it says, after a long time, let's read together. Yeah, you can hear yourself reading. After a long time had passed and the Lord had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them, Joshua, by then a very old man, summoned all Israel, their elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. One more verse in chapter 24, verse 1. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, he summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. So here we see that Joshua was addressing two groups of people. In chapter 23, to the elders, leaders, and all the officers. And in chapter 24, to the rest of the people, and including the leaders and the elders. Now, why does Joshua have to summon all of them you know, it's a big team to call the big gathering there. And why does he do that? To call all the people and the leaders together. You know, because Joshua wants them to hear his heart out. Joshua wants them to know that, you know, what is the future entail for Israel. And Joshua wants them that whether in his absence or, or what, you must carry on, in whether I'm here or not, but you have to continue on to be sure that Joshua wants to be sure that they are committed to move forward for the Lord. So the people of Israel was already setting down. We, we, we heard from last week's message from chapter 13 you know, to chapter 19. It talks about the allotment of the lands to the Israelites. And so now they are setting down and have they received the allotment of land and they are taking a rest from all their enemies. Now Joshua is very concerned about that. Why? Because when people are well rested, they will take a step back. They will be laid back or take things easy and let their guards down. You know, there's nothing wrong to take a rest or to take a break from all your hard work. But when we need, to, but we need to be very cautious because it is during this the peace, the time of peace it is very dangerous compared to the time of struggle. We are more alert. So as in the time of peace we will succumb to sins and temptations more. So the question here is, will they be complacent and be affected by the surrounding enemies with all their idolatry practices? Will they compromise by intermarrying their sons and their daughters with other faith? Will they lack of commitment 
and to God and turn cold in their faith to God. So these are all very valid questions because Israel had experienced consequences of their sins before. You remember the battle of Ai? Yeah, because of Achan's sins, they were defeated. And, and then next is come the deception of Gibeonites. So Joshua is cautioning them, do not let your guts down, you know, but to be resilient against the constant attack of the enemy who wants to lead us astray. You know, the enemy doesn't rest. You and I may take rest and you know, have a time of holiday, but the enemy is relentlessly stealing, killing, and destroying lives. And he will just want to keep us retarded in our spiritual growth. Therefore, we cannot play catch up. We must stay the hate. And we must depend on the Holy Spirit to overcome all the spiritual downers that we may feel and stay resilient in the spiritual journey until our finishing line. So it's not good enough just being cautious. We need to take on or the offensive step to face every challenge to move forward with God. So Joshua who fought, you know, who brought, you know, Israel right now into the promised land. And after 25 years, his situation maybe has some similarity with SIBKL because of the transition time that is happening, yeah? And after 27 years, of establishing this church as IBKL. If you do not know, we are, tw- we are 27 years and a half uh, old, and uh, we, we had a very humble beginning you know, with about uh, 15 among us in the rented walk-up uh, shop lot. We have many success stories and many miracles that God has led us from where we were to where we are here today. You know, today we are comfortable in this uh, in the collapsible kind of seats, yeah? air con and so forth. But in those days, we had to walk up three floors up in the beginning. We had to stack our own chair. We had, to, we had to buy our own chair at one time, you know. So that was a long way of showing where we were and where we are today. Now we can echo the words of Joshua that the Lord our God is with us. The Lord our God is for us and He has led us throughout this whole spiritual journey. It is a spiritual journey. And the dif- but the difference here, we read that Joshua is very old, but our senior pastor is not very old, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he shook his head. Yeah? Look at him. He's still strong. He's still looking good. Yeah? He is energetic, full of fire and zeal and passion for the Lord to take on another mountain. Amen? Wow, he is good. He says he's good for another four World Cup season. Wow, that is another 16 years to come. Amen. So praise the Lord that we have such a passionate leader for the Lord. Just as Joshua, he was passionate to tell the Israelites and the leaders, hey, come on, let us move on. Let us move forward because the, they are, you know, the days are coming. Yeah, we even greater exploit that we can do for the Lord because God who has led us thus far will continue to lead us forward. Amen. Now, however, we need to be wise and to plan and prepare our leaders, our leaders and our members ahead for the continuation of building this church and the expansion of the kingdom of God, either with positive presence or absence. So let's pray together, you know, as members of the church or, you know, as uh, uh, online, you're coming in regularly, pray together with us as we look up to Jesus for the next discourse. Now, Joshua gave crucial reminders to the leaders and all the the people. And the first reminder, crucial reminder they gave is remember God's faithfulness. We are going to look into the passage of Scripture from chapter 23, verse 3 to 5. It's on the screen, and let us read together one more time. He says, You yourself have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all this nation for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Next verse. No more? Okay. Now, verse 4. Remember how I have allotted as an inheritance for your tribes all the land of the nations that remain, the nations I conquered between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea in the West. Verse 5. 
So the Lord your God himself will push them out for your sake. He will drive them out before you, and you will take possession of the land as the Lord your God promised you. Now here we see that Joshua is reminding the leaders that God is the one that who fought for them. God is the one that who gave them these lands that they are now settling in. And God is faithful in keeping His promises to the ancestors. And in Joshua chapter 24, verse 2 to 11, you know, Joshua reminded now it's the people at large, and, you know, including the leaders, and tell them that it is good. It is good to remember what God has done. You know, let me paraphrase these verses here because if you read from, I, I love this paraphrase because it is so, you know, uh, uh, what they call uh, easy to understand, much easier to understand and, and, and it's more, uh, uh, you know, that, that youngish, you know, in, in that sense, the gusto. He said, long ago, to the times beyond the Euphrates, you were wondering in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. You was, yeah, before that you were a slave in Egypt and you acquired lands in East Jordan. Then you came to Jericho. Then now you are settled in the promised land. It is God who says this. I took your father Abraham. I led him and gave him Isaac, Esau, and Jacob. I brought your fathers out of, from uh, Canaan. I brought you out from Egypt. I brought you out into the lands of the Amorites. I got you into the western Jordan, into the promised land. And I would not listen to the curses of Balaam. And I delivered you out of his hand over and over again. I sent the hornet before you yeah, and drove out the Amorites. I gave you the land you're living in. You did not plant, but you're eating from it. You did not build houses, but you're living living in it, it is so important to know how God has brought you up from where you were to where you are today. So Joshua is recalling all the good things that the Lord has done to his leaders and people. He wants them to remember God's faithfulness, you know, in all their achievement is nothing to do with Joshua, it's nothing to do with them. You know, it's God that says just now as we paraphrase this, it's God that says, I, it is I who did this. It is I who did that. It is I who fought and won the battle for your sake. Now, who are these Israelites? They are just normal people like, ordinary people like you and I. They were farmers. They were herdsmen. Yeah, they were slaves at one time, you know, carrying shovels, spades, and chanko, you know, and with unmasked, uh, capabilities to fight battles, yet they achieved the most unbelievable task, you know, of uh, overcoming seven territories, defeating 31 kings. Can you believe that? Can you believe that with that kind of skill set and background, they can achieve all these victories? Now, if it is God, remember, it is God who gave them these victories and successes. So it's very true in our life. When we are in the midst of challenges, we cannot see what God has done for us. But when we reflect on how we have arrived today from where we were to where we are today, we just realize that it was God's faithfulness all along. I don't know whether you can just recall, just think back of something, yeah, or the many events that God has been faithful. As you recall now, wow, in those times you were going through some challenging time. But it is through those challenging times that it makes you strong and makes you closer to God and you gain to know that well, God is so good, God is so faithful to bring me out. And, and you, instead of dragging those times, now you're saying, thank God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for being there with me. That I'm able to see that one true God that's with me, that you are reliable, you are faithful. You know, in 2019, SIBKL celebrated our 25th anniversary of God's faithfulness. How many of you were there at the MindTech you know, exhibition? Wow, I see so many hands. Yeah? Exhibition center. You know, I, I, and also those who are online, I believe there's many of you who were there at the uh, MindTech, yeah? MindTech exhibition center to celebrate the, the story, the 25th anniversary that we call it our story, the team then, his story, our story, his story. You know, very soon, that we are, you know, we are going to celebrate our 30th anniversary. 
yeah, in 2024, just two and a half years from now. And I hope that those of you who did not raise your hand just now, and I hope that you will be faithful with us. And then on that day, on the 20th, 30th anniversary in 2024, you will celebrate together with us God's faithfulness. Amen. Will you do that? Yeah, we will see you then, right? So now this book that I'm holding here, that I brought here today, now this is the 25th anniversary hard copy magazine. And I want to read out a paragraph of the preface of the book. Yeah, and uh, oh, it's also written up there, you can see. It says that this book has taken... 25 years to rhyme. It's been written, rewritten, articulated over many years, handed down from fathers to sons, pastors to leaders to members, and shared among friends following Jesus. This is SIBKL story, and it is also God's story. We hope that when you read this book, you will see the fingerprints of ordinary faithful men and women in close-up. But when you step back, you will see that it was God's hand all along. My story, his story, and his story, my story. Amen. Amen. You know, when we look back, hallelujah, hallelujah, when we look back, we are really, you know, I, I, you know, at least that's one thing. If you have nothing to look back, this is one thing that you can look back and say, God, you have been faithful. I don't know how many years you have been in this church. It could be 27 years, it could be 20 years, or 10, or 5, or 1 year. But as you look back, you can agree with us. It is God's faithfulness that's present here that we are where, where we are today. Now, as we look back into our past journey, we see that the faithfulness of God is indeed in this church. And you can see it's beautiful, beautifully documented in this book. The faithful God who has been with us for 27 years, do you believe that God is going to continue to be faithful with SIBKL for many more years to come? Amen. Yes, we believe that. 30 years, 50 years, 60 years, beyond, even beyond our time, it is going to carry on because, not, not because of us, but because of God's faithfulness that we can be faithful to partner with Him in what He's doing in this, in this wonderful church. Now, I remember that that time we sang this uh, song uh, during the briefing at the uh, MindTech, uh, and the song goes this way. You know the song, Sing Together With Me. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. And every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. Isn't it beautiful that God is faithful? Yes. Truly, it is the goodness of God that we are where we are today. Now, some of us have went through challenges in our health, relationship, finances, or, you know, spiritual issues. Many of us also experience, you know, uh, breakthrough, having healing of terminal illness, spiritual breakthroughs. God has turned us uh, around and our lives around for good. And some, of, some lives even, you know, was uh, delivered from demonic power. And many encountered the goodness of God since coming to this church. And many of you, you know, like my children and your children, they were grown up from kids' zone to university. And today your children, they are very successful and they are doing well, married well. And not only God has blessed you and I, God has blessed our children and they are loving God too. And this is the faithfulness of God. And that is why so many of us are still in this church, faithfully serving in this church. Amen. We are going to give praise to God. Hallelujah. We can testify that God is faithful. You know, just as Joshua chapter 21 verse 45 says, not one of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Amen. I want you to read this so that it, you know, it, this verse go into your heart and to believe this is a faithful God and His promises are true. Yes and amen. Come, let's say, uh, say this verse together. Ready? One to go. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Hallelujah. You know, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God the, yeah, the praise. Amen. So when you reflect on the faithfulness of God, 
you know, it, it, you know, something just augurs well. Something just want to, you know, build a strong foundation of faith because you know God and you experience His faithfulness in keeping His word. And you know that His word is true. His promises is always, He will fulfill it just as we saw how He fulfilled the land, the promised land to the Israelites. And today, He will certainly fulfill the promises He has given to this church and to your life. And the second reminder that Joshua has given, this crucial reminder is, run after spirituality. In uh, chapter 23, verse 6 to 11, we want to read this. Uh, so let's read these verses again. Yeah, in uh, verse uh, 6 to 11. Be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the Lord of Moses without turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. Next. But you are to hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nation. To this nation, no one has been able to withstand you. Next. One of you roused a thousand because the Lord your God fights for you just as He promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Now when I say run after spirituality, what do I mean by that? No, it's about growing your spiritual uh, maturity, that you will carry a godly perspective and a godly character in your daily life. Now, Joshua gave us the processes just now as we read the verses to, to spirituality. You need this. You need to obey God in verse 6. You need to hold on to God. You need to cling on to God in verse 8. And in verse 11, he says, love the Lord your God. Now, these are processes to have attained the spirituality that Joshua is, say, is talking about. But the keynote of this reminder is, we have to make spirit, spiritual thing the main thing. We may be living on this earth, yet the whole journey of our Christian life is very spiritual. You know, do you know that life on earth is very spiritual one? Now, just look at Joshua's life. You know, he knew the importance of spirituality Right from the start, when God gave him this mission, you know, his total reliance is to stay obedient to God. And, and the word of God that God told him in Joshua chapter 1 verse 6, do not look to your left nor to the right, but obey the Lord of Moses. That is what God gave it to him. And what happened now but in this chapter 23 and 24, when Joshua is coming to the end of his ministry, Joshua did not give his people, this is the 10 instruction, 10 strategies or 10 formulas, how to win battles and be successful in your life. But he gave them just one word that he had received from God. And it is a powerful word that he has experienced that is effectiveness when he obeyed the Lord. And that word is in John, I mean Joshua chapter 1, Verse 6, it says, yeah, do not leave, as we have said, do not look to your left or right, but obey the Word of God. And then in Joshua chapter 23, verse 6, he reminded them, this is the powerful words. This is the words that we need. You know, what else? What else, he says? I've, you know, maybe the people when they gather, they're thinking, wow, I'm, good. I'm coming here to learn from a guru has, who has been successful. But, you know, when they came to, to, to Joshua, Joshua just gave them the one that is only one way, that is to obey the Lord. That is to be spiritual and to, you know, come to the Lord and be spiritual and go after the Lord, run after the Lord. And therefore, he says it, to remain strong spiritually is to obey the Word of God. We want to run after spiritual, spirituality and how can we be, be strong spiritually? It is to obey the Word of God. Amen. So the enemy will test you. The only way to defeat your enemy is to build your spirituality in God's Word and do not look for options on your left nor wisdom on your right. You know, I, I just, uh, today I just uh, came across this verse in, uh, in Psalm 1 to 9. He says that we, can, we may be persecu persecuted, 
but we can never be defeated. Why? Because we have the Word of God. Because we know who is our God. And the Lord, the God, who says that He is with us and for us, He will certainly, when we obey His Word and rely on Him, He will certainly bring us through. And it is not about the persecution. It is about the victory that God is going to take us through. Amen? Everybody says, I must run after spirituality. Amen. Online, those are online. I must run oh, uh, after spirituality. Amen. You know, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 14, and Paul said this, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive this truth from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they cannot understand it. For those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. So we can understand spiritual realm when we know God through our connection in prayer, through our, you know, re receiving of revelation through the Holy Spirit. It is not about the rituals that we go through. It's not about how, you know, how much that, uh, that we have done this or done that or man's wisdom. But it, is, it says through the Spirit of God that it reveals to us and we can write on into the spiritual realm. You know, yes, there are obstacles you face in life, instead of reacting with fear, we should react with calm obedience, following God's, you know, word, review word. And when we are, you know, when we stay with Him, God delights to reveal His words to us. It is, you know, just as your son that, that comes to you, and each time that, uh, that your children come to you, you know, you have something, you, know, you have something to maybe to teach them, to guide them, or they ask you a question, you are so willing to, you know, to give them some guidance. It's the same way. God wants us to come to Him that He can instruct us and, you know, to be near Him that because God is spirit here and therefore when we are moving in the spiritual realm together with Him, we will be able to see the blessing and also the, <clears throat> the goodness of God. Therefore, we must run after spirituality which must be your priority and not just an afterthought. You know, last week, in, in the, a cell from my, my district, you know, experienced an amazing encounter with the Holy Spirit over Zoom. You know, all this, uh, uh, this cell, many of them are new believers. You know, after what time, they say the simple prayer, and they sought the Lord. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them, filled them, you know, and the next thing, they were at different location. They were, you know, over Zoom. And when the Holy Spirit filled them, they outburst with uh, the tongues and nobody guide them and say, oh, you must speak in tongues, let me lay hands on you. Nobody, but it was the Holy Spirit that came upon them and they burst out in tongues. They were in tears and one of them was healed instantly. Wow, hallelujah. You know, this showed us that when we run after spirituality, God showed up. And they, you know, this group of people, they rose up to hallow God's presence and they witnessed God's miraculous power in the midst. You know, they are so young in their in the faith, maybe one year, one year old uh, in, the Lord, Jesus, in the Lord. And now they are so excited, they are so on fire with the Lord and you see the whole face, hallelujah. You know, uh, one, one year ago when I see them, you know, they are questioning a lot about God. But today, they, they want to run after God. They want more of God. It's not enough. And that is the good sign, church, that, you know, we are in the right place and in the, in the right cell setting. And it says, hallelujah, we want to run after the heart of God because when we run after spirituality, God is going to come and God is going to show us the way. Amen. So God wants you and I to know Him and experience Him. So whatever happens in your life is a reflection of your spirituality. Hallelujah. Praise God. And let's recap Joshua's crucial reminder here. Number one, remember God's faithfulness. Number two, run after spirituality. And the third crucial reminder is rallying call to finish well. We want to read Joshua chapter 24, verse 14 to 16. That it says, now fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and Egypt, in Egypt and serve the Lord. 
But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Next. Then the people answer, far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Amen. You see, Joshua finished well, we know, because he has led the Israelites into the promised land. But his concern is, will his leaders, will the people of God remain, you know, uh, constant in their faith and continue his legacy to finish well? You may be a leader in the church, or you may be leader in your own right. Have you asked yourself this question? Will I finish well? Will I finish well? Now, to finish well, Joshua challenged them with these two last call. The first call, he says, a call to serve the Lord. As we are read in verse 14, Joshua say, throw away the gods of your ancestors and serve the Lord only. Ask yourself, are there areas in your life where, you know, where you are trusting in God and also something else at the same time? If there is, it is a matter of identifying the something else and you need to throw it away. You cannot take serving God lightly or casually. You cannot serve God and also at the same time living in dishonoring lifestyle and having idolatry. You may say, I do not have big statues. And so what is idolatry here? You know, John Kevin gives a very good definition on this. Uh, what is idolatry? He says, God is defrauded of His honour whenever any particle, however small, of all the things which He claims for Himself is right now transferred to the idols. You may not have, you know, big idols that you talk about, but a Christian idol can be craving or honouring something that put more importance than God. Or it can be you're doing something in the church where your heart is not in it. And that can be idolatry. You know, I met people that say, I will turn to God and serve Him at a certain age. Or give me two more years living in pleasures of life, then I will follow God wholeheartedly. Now, this is unacceptable thinking. Why? Because the Bible tells us life is brief. We do not know what in store for us to, tomorrow. What is going to happen the next minute or hour, we do not know. Just this week, I heard of this young man, 38 years old, had a heart attack, collapsed and died on the spot. So you must not think that you are the master of time or you are in control of your life. Give God the priority now, my friends. It is now and not tomorrow. So you may make decisions every day, you know, what to eat, la, what to wear, or more important uh, decisions like you want to buy the car, you buy the house, or going to work in another town, or who should you marry. You know, all these choices can be heavy. In verse 15, Joshua says this, who are you going to choose? That is a very important question. It's not about just the material thing or physical thing. Joshua is talking about something that is physical that will affect your physical. And he says, that is very important and you need to make a choice. You need to choose correctly. So Joshua took the lead. He took the lead and says, this is my decision. For me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Now, I know that this is a famous verse, and most of us can quote it very well. You know, it can also be found maybe in your living room right now to show you know, that this household is devoted to God. But more than this statement, Joshua challenged the people to make a clear choice, whom will you serve? My friends, who will you serve today? Will you make a choice today? Who will you serve? You can choose, yeah, Today and not yesterday or not tomorrow, but this is the day, Joshua said. Your pastor cannot choose for you. Your leaders cannot choose for you. Your spouse that's uh, sitting beside you cannot choose for you. Your parents cannot choose for you. No one can choose for you. You 
You know, this is a personal choice. Only you can make the decision whom you will choose. So I know that even with this challenge, that either you're he hearing me from the online or sitting here, not every one of us will respond positively, you know, to the Lord. There will always be someone, you know, remain on the fringe of decision for you're not ready to submit yourself, to trust God completely. So what decision would you take today? Would it be God or another imperfect substitute? The choice is yours. And the second challenge that Joshua gave was a call to commit to the Lord. And in Joshua chapter 24, verse 19 to 25, we're going to read this together. He says, Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sin. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, He will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after He has sinned. He has been, he has been good to you. Next. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and you yourself, your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey Him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people and there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them the decrees and the laws. So here we saw that Joshua is rallying his leaders and his, his people to finish well. You know, come on, he was, he was urging his uh, leaders and people, come on, you can do it. Come on, leaders, you can lead the people to the finishing line. You can do it. Come on, more retreats are in store for you. Can you feel that urgency of the heart of Joshua, that he wants us, he wants everyone to finish well. But to finish well requires a very high level of commitment. That's why he provoked them in verse 19. You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. Yeah, this really gets their attention. And I hope it gets your attention too. Because the people say, what? What do you mean I cannot serve the Lord my God? Why can't I serve Him? You know, Joshua is challenging you today too. That the Lord, the, the Lord your God cannot accept your adulterous living or lifestyle, serving God and idols at the same time. God will not put up with the nonsense and lukewarmness and also insinc insincerity in our heart. So Joshua provoked the crowd. You don't really mean what you're saying. You don't really want to serve God. You are not sincere and you are not determined to serve God alone. So Joshua wants the Israelites to think carefully. This is a serious matter, you know, and you have to make it, you know, think seriously before a decision of commitment that you're going to make. Not just a lip service and then after that, you know, just forget about it, but a well thought through decision to commit to God to finish well for the Lord. As I became, are you willing to commit to God and serve Him and finish well for the Lord? Are you willing are you willing to finish well yeah, for the Lord? If you, you know, have this commitment to serve God, now this church, I tell you, will never be the same again. This church you know, has a good future. You will see every generation you know, coming alongside the young and the old, you know, serving the Lord wholeheartedly together. And this church will continue to be strong and grow stronger from generation to generation. As we always say, we will fly high and stay long. Amen. We will fly high and stay long. Amen. You want to see that happening in your generation and, and also your future generation that they will serve the Lord and commit to God all the days of their life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, praise the Lord. Come on. Let's praise God. Amen. You know, elders, pastors, and leaders of the church, you, you see, we have such a wonderful church here who love God who are willing to serve God's mandate that's given to SIBKL.
Amen. We are in together. And now to do that, we need to echo the same commitment that Joshua chapter 24 and uh, verse 24 says. We will serve the Lord our God and obey Him. Can we say this together? Yeah, say this after me. We will serve the Lord our God and obey Him. Amen. Now, let's try it again. We will serve the Lord our God and obey Him. Amen. In closing, church, remember Joshua crucial reminder to the leaders and to the people at large and to us here today. It is a very crucial reminder for you and I too to take heed to these three areas of reminders. Number one, Remember God's faithfulness. Run after spirituality and rallying call to finish well. In verse 25, I'm going to end here. Joshua covenanted with the people by setting up a stone pillar as a reminder of their commitment to God and a witness for this generation and future generations. Now, God is calling out for you and I to make a serious commitment to respond to His call for, commi- for your commitment and to those who had run out, man, especially to those who had run out you know, uh, of your faith. You are very cold right now in your faith. I want to encourage you today to come, come back to God and to love Him again. And the rest of us, God wants to challenge us to commit to serve Him and to finish well your spiritual journey. Will you say yes to the Lord? And will you commit to serve the Lord? Now, if you are willing to say yes, Lord, I am willing to commit my life to serve you. Even to those who are in online, I want to speak to you. Are you willing to say, yes, God, I'm willing to serve you and commit my life to you. I want you to stand with me. Wherever you are, you can be in the living room. Wherever you are, that you are located, if you want to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing to commit to you, let's arise and let us say this prayer together to seal this decision with this prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I see so many of us standing and it is this August very well, you know, for this church for these generations that you and I are in and for future generations to come. God, God is wonderful and I see His faithfulness that you have also enjoyed the faithfulness of God. That's why you are bold, you are committed to stand up right now to say, God, I'm in. I'm willing alone to finish well for you. So for those who are standing to make this statement, or commitment to the Lord. Let me ask you this question before we say this prayer. You are witnesses against yourself that you are chosen to commit to the Lord. The congregation made you reply, yes, we are witnesses to our commitment. Can you reply? Yes, we are witnesses to our commitment. Amen. Now let us pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, You are my God. In You alone, I place my trust. Thank You, Lord, for choosing me to know You, believe in You, and understand that You alone are God. Holy Spirit, keep my life free from idolatry. Forgive me, Lord, as I repent of having idols in my life. As of today, I've decided to turn my heart to You alone. I commit my life to the guidance of the Holy Spirit that I will live to honour the Lord my God. Next. This is my commitment. I will serve the Lord my God. I will obey God's word. I will hold on to you as my only God. I will lead my household to love the Lord. I will equip my children to walk in the ways of God. I will entertain thoughts worthy of the Lord my God. I will worship the Lord my God in spirit and in truth. I will finish well for the Lord my God. 
Lord Jesus, help me to live a life that makes a difference for you in all that I do and help me to complete this commitment that I will finish well for your will to be done. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. This is our prayer and we have to seal our commitment with this prayer. And Lord, we are witnesses. All of us here are witnesses, Lord, to our prayer. And we thank you, God. Oh, Lord, for the blood of Jesus to seal this in our hearts, in our lives, and in our generations to come. That, Lord, that they will remember, oh, Lord, that we have made this commitment to you, that we will continue to serve you. Amen. And in closing, we want to exalt the Lord with this song. We want to praise God with this song. Sing it together. Hallelujah. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need is in God to Egypt, but Lord, we want to look forward. Oh Lord, we are right now in the promises of God. We are in the promises, promised land, and we want to look forward to God for more victory, God. It is not the end, but oh Lord, we continue, Lord, to be faithful. Oh Lord, to expand the kingdom of God slowly by slowly, little by little, that we will move forward to God for the for your kingdom of God, that in the name of Jesus of God, that Lord, that we want to finish well by obeying the commandments of God, that we will go ye therefore to preach the gospel, to make disciples, and signs and wonders shall follow us. So therefore, God, even as we receive your word today, may we, Lord, 
oh God, digest the word and put it into application in our life. And as we do that, we will see, oh Lord, victories, more victories is coming to this life here. And even as we leave here, Lord, I to pray the blessings to all, to all, whether they're physical or in the online, in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's gracious smile overshine on you and be gracious on you. And may the Lord turn His face towards you and grant you His shalom. Amen. Praise the Lord. The service is over. Thank you for coming. And we will see you again. Bless you. Amen. And those who are on the online and those who need prayer, you can go to the site, I need prayer. And our prayer ministers are there right now to, to minister to you. Amen. Thank you for coming and good day. And bless you. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you. So we invite you to connect with us. God bless. to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. 
You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. 
You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your Titan offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A holy nation, a people called his own, that you may declare his praises, who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. 
One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church.